Sester. And Alfredo Sauce here. Of You, Me, and Sicily. And on this Fireside Chat, we have so much to talk to you about, including pasta, tomatoes, water, and so much more. But first, we want to thank all our new subscribers on YouTube and all our new fans on Facebook. We broke 25,000 followers this week. Not bad for two people who started off with a dollar and 49 cents and a, and a donut, basically. <laughs> Here's how I see it. The more followers, the more people we get to impact showcase Sicily and all its beauty. Seriously, it's been a wonderful experience. This is our what, seventh year or sixth year? We started in 2014. Six 63 years. episodes later. Wow. That's right. All right, what are we talking about? All right, about I, want, want to thank, I want to give a shout out to a couple people, a couple people, like 25 people who uh, met, commented on our Facebook and on YouTube, including Paul Miele. Thanks, Esther and Alfred, for these great videos that let me see the land of my heritage. Great to see Sicily when you cannot get there. Uh, Aldina da Silva, my boyfriend, grew up near Adrano. He said he used to go to the sea. On the way back home, he would stop in Tre Castagni for a gelato. There you go. Hello. That's what we did, and that's what we do on our Tre Castagni piece. Okay, and Shaka, molto bene, Maria Q. Such beauty, history, and culture. Love all the art of ceramics. Another city added to the list of must-see. Bravo, Esther Nelford. Thank you very much. Craig and Beth D'Amato. Right, as usual, enjoyable, informative. I always like, I, I always feel like I'm on a continuous vacation watching these. We've done Tre Castagni, we've done Chaca, Castelvetrano, and Saluninte, and also Cianciana, and we have many more. Okay, I adore Italy, I adore Sicily. Every part has something to offer the food, the culture, the history, the warmth. Janet Lombardi, Joe and Suicione. Great, another informative video. It's great to see these towns that we may not be able to visit. And they especially like that Sistine Chapel, which episode, that was the Castel Vetrano one. That was pretty cool, yeah, huh? Yeah. And everyone, Alfred, has been commenting about the olives. Excellent episode on Castel Vetrano. I love them by Patano Olives, says Denise DeMarco, Jennifer Rose Titone. Those olives are amazing. Now, this last one we did was Chianciana, right? The sulfur mines. Wow. Lots of comments on those. Um, a lot of people had uh, ancestors like Joan Renda and Custer Tremini. Uh, my great-grandfather worked in the mine as a child. The conditions were exactly as you described in the video. So make sure you catch that one. And Philip Wida, he was one of the sponsors for the Chianciana. He said, Esther and Alfred, what a great video you produced on my grandfather and grandmother and Uncle Felix's hometown. The last time I was there was with my dad, Philip, and it was his first and only trip in 1982. Your videos allowed me to visit many places that, that I have been. What you do is professional and entertaining. That's our aim. We love it. Okay. Sicily has full of hidden gems. Everybody can go to Tamina, Setacusa, those places. Now we're... We're digging. We're doing the digging. We're digging. We're finding Good the new out. <laughs> and we have a lot more to show you, too, so stick around. All right. We've only just begun. All right, what are now we talking about? Now we're going to talk about some important things. So a few of you had a question. Someone said, I think, uh, about tomatoes. They had a question about tomatoes. How many types of tomatoes? I think he had 89. There are lots of types of tomatoes here in Sicily, right? What's the history of, of tomatoes? Okay, the tomatoes were brought here right around the time of Columbus, as you know. And uh, Naples was really the one area that really expanded on the tomatoes, although they didn't eat them when they first brought them there. It wasn't until the 18th century that they actually ate them. They thought they were poisonous. Boy, were they wrong, huh? <laughs> uh, but out of desperation, they began to eat them when it got bad. And, of course, uh, uh, tomatoes being what they are, they're now all over Italy. That's basically culturally associated with Italy. And I want to just show you a couple of the, the ways that we... Uh, this one here... Uh, is from uh, for Su Suzanne Punto and Joe. They asked me about the cherry tomatoes from uh, Pacino. And this brand over here, it's called Bottiglia di Sicilia, Qua, is a very good brand. We put this on pasta and also on the sauce, and she loves it on her fish, too. And what about the pizza? Yep, and the pizza, pizza, too. Pizza cherry tomatoes. This is the standard stuff, and I, I selected this brand from the market because I know they sell this in the United States, Cirio. Very good brand. Rustica is the one I prefer. That's the thicker one. You can make a nice uh, sauce. But basically, this is sauce. Okay? It's tomato sauce. Now, you could also get it in the can. 
Now, before I continue well, about... Well, wait a sec. More about tomatoes. Tell, tell me about the history of putting tomatoes on a piece of bread, right? Ah, well, that goes back to pizza. Roman... Oh, wait a minute. The whole idea of a pizza actually goes back to Roman times, but it really wasn't called pizza in those days, okay? The Romans used a coarse type of a wheat. Actually, it probably came from Sicily. And they put stuff on it. They put it over the fire when they're out on their exercises or conquest, vegetables or whatever... So now, it's kind of like a focaccio? Kind of like a focaccio with stuff on top of it. Now, in terms of pizza as we know it, okay, there's a big uh, dispute about what ended the end of the United States of America. Well, Philadelphia lays claim for it at the end of the 19th century, but also New York City. I'm a New York City proponent. I like Lombardi's Pizzeria in the Little Italy section on right off of Mulberry Street. For the tomato pie. It was called tomato pie. In those days, they didn't put all the cheeses and pepperonis and all this other stuff. It was just tomato pie, they called it. And so it's only been since the beginning of the 20th century that pizza, pizza as we know it, um, happens. Okay? Uh, that's so interesting because now, as you said before, I mean, tomatoes are in everything. On the pasta dishes, on, you know, you cook fish yep. with the tomatoes, on salads, I mean... There's so many types of tomatoes, it's hard to imagine a time when there was no tomatoes in Italy. Well, let me just say one, one thing else about pizza and tomatoes, okay? <clears throat> Most of the pizza here that we eat in the United States, and even in Sicily and throughout Italy, would not hit the criteria of what the Pizza Association in Naples considers to be pizza, if you mm. can believe that. A pizza needs to be a certain diameter and a certain thickness, okay? And with just enough stuff, a certain amount of stuff on top of it, usually it's cheese, okay, to be, uh, uh, not the cheese, uh, tomatoes, to be considered a pizza. They have a competition, and I know everybody in the world now has a greatest pizza in the world, but this is the, this is the one outfit. The outfit out of Naples is the one that really calls the shot on pizza, okay? Wow. Yep. Okay, right, so let's move on I can to speak pasta. a lot more on pizza, but I wanted to just give you a couple other things. All right, can we talk about pasta? Because I have, in my life, never seen so many cuts of pasta in supermarkets. These are pastini. I mean, it is endless. Let's, let me show you two brands over here. Poyati pasta, okay? And this one over here is Poyati pasta. Alberto Poyati. This one here with the blue label was um, started in Masala de Valo from a loan from the Americans after the Second World War. We used to import hundreds of thousands of pounds of this particular one into the United States, but not the entire size one, because you see, in the United States of America, by law, the FDA says that pasta has to have a certain amount of vitamins and minerals in it, okay, whereas in Italy, it's simply Durham semolina, Water and that's it. As they say, pasta and basta. <laughs> this that's is the favorite. Italian. This is the Italian uh, brother, and this is normal pasta. That's the C and Z. They're both a kilo. Okay, that's 2.2 pounds. Both of these cost roughly, and you can buy them on sale every single Saturday week, about a buck, a dollar ten. All right, okay. so talk to me about the numbers. Okay. Because you go, you have spaghetti, and you have zero to 20 or something like that. Right. Then you have the different types of macaroni, like this is yes. macaroni, and then each one has a different number. Right. And what are those numbers, Alfred? Right? Okay, if you look over here, all the pastas have numbers from zero up until the 80s. Not every company makes a pasta that has 80 cuts. Maybe a company will make a, uh, uh, 50 cuts, but n not all of them. So, the long cuts, the spaghettis, those are the lower numbers, starting from zero, zero, spaghettini, angel hair pasta, and then you go up. Spaghetti, you know, thicker, fettuccine, etc. Then, into the teens, you get into the pastina. pastina. That's the generic name is pastina. This one over here is pinoli. Okay, this mm -hmm. is number 18. This is great for soups, or how I prefer, just a little bit of pasta, butter, That's cheese, it. you're good to go. Uh, and this is another, oh, and, and I didn't want to show you that. Show right, me, give me the fusilli over there, please, okay? okay? Fusilli is one of my favorite pastas as well. Okay, fusilli, oops, you're hold it up, oops, upside down. Why is this good? This is the curly Q one. Because when you put your sauce in it, 
it holds the sauce far better mm. than your shortcuts like a, a penny. If you're going to buy a penny, buy a penny with lines. If you're going to buy a rigatoni, buy a rigatoni with lines. Good advice. And then finally, you get into your autogenic pastas. Those are your homemade pastas by regional autogenic producers such Macaroni. as... Show me this one over here. Macaroni. This is the one that you can buy in any supermarket, in a big market over here in Italy. And those cost about a dollar and 59 cents, and they taste terrific. Okay, it's a little bit more doughy and you have to cook yeah. it. So there are two different types of pastas over here. All right, so now this has been a staple in our house, especially this summer. Woo, it is hot, hot, hot. We've been drinking a lot of water. And why do we drink bottle out of a bottle, Alfred? Okay, this brand here is called Cava Grande. Cava Grande, blue bottle over here. This is one of the few uh, bottled waters that is bottled at the source in Mount Etna. Okay, it doesn't come from a river, it doesn't come from, you know, public water like some of these companies have. This is terrific water. A bottle of this, that's two liters, comes in a six pack. And it costs roughly two dollars to two dollars and fifty cents a six pack, depending on where About you go. Three dollars. Yeah. But why do we drink the bottle the water? Okay, because Explain of that. the infra the infrastructure in Sicily is so bad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so bad, all right, that the amount of calcium in the drinking water is so bad that if you drink a glass of water, the crystals will, like, pop out of your skin. On the sink, Alfred, in the, in the bathroom, yeah, in the kitchen, awful. I'm all constantly scrubbing down the calcium. The shower the heads calcium. always right. get, every, the shower heads get clogged up all the time when you put it on. And off, like she said, the bathroom or the shower or the kitchen okay. sink. Okay. Uh, it causes havoc on the laundry. Yeah, you have to have a water softener. So we and everybody else <laughs> Either filter buy bottled water. Or buy bottled. Okay. Here's no, a big have. thank you to all our fans, to all our supporters. Thank you for watching You, Me, and Sicily. Thank you for watching our fireside chats. And make sure you subscribe. Oh, and I'm going to leave a link down below to all our ancestral homes. And if you want to sponsor one of our ancestral homes, send me a message, send us an email. We're also on Facebook. Can I say one more thing? Of course you can. We've been advertising and marketing it under, uh, we're bringing Sicily to you this summer. Because, of course, you can't come here because of the uh, airline situation. So if you do have a uh, ancestral village and you would like to sponsor it, it's not that expensive at all, okay? We basically work for gasoline and a panino, something like that. <laughs> message us and you could sponsor a half segment or you could sponsor a whole segment and believe me so far we put up five and thousands and thousands more. of people have been watching them the people who we put them up for you love heard, them you heard philip he does yeah. and said it was professional and he loved it so, so if you have a little else. gem that you'd like us to go investigate we're going to be going on the road and starting on in, in uh, 10 more days we're going to be last. on the road for the rest of the year so on that note, on make that sure note. you subscribe to our YouTube channel, You Mean Sicily on Facebook. And here's a chin chin to you. Hope to see you soon in Sicily. If not, make sure you watch our videos, follow us, and see you later. Grazie tante per tutti. Ciao. Ciao.